Hello. Good morning, everybody. And welcome to this webinar about the fifth edition of Egypt and Spain Innovation Program, ESITI. My name is Cristina Gracia. I'm program manager for ESITIP at CDTI, and I'm going to be moderating this session. Today, we are going to learn about ESITIP. We are going to learn about ICT ecosystems in Egypt and Spain, and about a success story of a project funded by ESITIP. But before we start, I would like to thank you all for joining us and especially ITIDAS and CDTI CEOs. They are going to share with us some welcoming words. Please, Mr. Javier Ponce, Director General from CDTI, it's time for your opening. Can you share your, your camera and your micro to start your presentation, please? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Cristina, and uh, very good morning, uh, the colleagues from uh, ETIDA and CDTI, Spanish and Egyptian researchers, representative from private and, and public r and institutions and, and companies, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as, as the year of uh, CDTI, I would like uh, to first uh, um, warmly thank, particularly engineer Mr. Am uh, Mafud, uh, CEO of uh, ETIDA, for joining me in this, uh, in this opening, uh, showing our institutional support in specific, uh, this specific call for proposal. Well, uh, we have to recognize that uh, the common uh, circumstances uh, that we are living uh, don't allow us uh, to celebrate uh, this event at uh, a smart village in, in Cairo, as it was uh, firstly intended, and as we have done uh, in the previous uh, call for uh, proposals. Um, welcome then, uh, all of you, to this online seminar about the uh, fifth call for proposal or R&D project in IT. And, uh, I hope uh, this will be a fruitful meeting, uh, but uh, let me first uh, show some, some figures uh, in relation to CDTI and uh, our action uh, in Spain. <clears throat> we are the uh, Spanish uh, Innovation Agency. It's, uh, uh, for us, it's a uh, uh, common uh, work to, to try to uh, partner with uh, some agencies like ITIDA, uh, and try to, uh, to join in uh, events like this, uh, this science and technology event uh, aiming at creating research networks, technology, and business partnerships uh, in order to raise uh, visibility of Spanish and Egyptian tech brand across the ICT sector. As I have mentioned, uh, as uh, Spanish uh, Innovation Agency, we belong to the Ministry of Science and Innovation, and um, we, uh, we are uh, 43 um, years old at present, uh, so we have a, a large experience in promoting uh, research and technological development projects from, from companies. Um, we have also some uh, new lines uh, that uh, we have launched during the last two, three years like a public, public, public procurement of innovation and internalization of Spanish companies uh, with uh, trying to demonstrate uh, their capacities uh, inside and outside uh, Spain. So <clears throat> um, in relation to that, to the internationalization, uh, we have uh, we are the Spanish representative of uh, some of the main um, international programs like uh, European Union Framework Program, uh, Eureka, Iberoica, and uh, a lot of multilateral and bilateral programs, as uh, I will mention uh, after, uh, in relation with, the, uh, with Egypt. According with the last figures, I have to say that in 2019, uh, CDTI have marked more than 800 million euros in direct funding, mainly soft loans and grants, that uh, has uh, mobilized more than uh, 1,100 million of private investment uh, of R&D uh, in, in private uh, companies. <clears throat> Among our activities, CTI has entered into agreements with several research and innovation funding agencies with the aim of supporting technological cooperation programs with more than 90 countries and are presented in more than uh, in, the, in the form of multilateral, bilateral, and unilateral management. 
In Middle East and North Africa, CDTI has collaboration agreements with Morocco, Algeria, Jordan, and of course, Egypt. That is uh, the, the issue that we, we want to present uh, today. <clears throat> Indeed, uh, CTI signed on uh, 2016 a memorandum of understanding for cooperation with the uh, Information Technology Industry Development Agency, ITIDA, uh, one institution belonging to the Ministry of uh, Communication and Information Technology. And in uh, 2019, both agencies agree on renew um, it, uh, this memorandum of understanding and, and try to uh, prolong this uh, fruitful cooperation for three additional years. These partnerships has allowed both funding agencies to support innovative R&D projects, as uh, we will show during this event. Trying to uh, introduce some figures uh, in relation with the relevance of the ICT sector in Spain, I would like to mention just a uh, few of them. Uh, for in, in Spain, the ICT sector represents uh, more than 3.2% of GDP. Um, more than uh, 25,000 companies are working in ICT sector uh, with more than uh, 420,000 people employees in, in, this, uh, in these companies. We have to say that uh, this sector is very concentrated uh, geographically in Spain. More than 84% of these companies are located in, uh, in the area of Madrid and Catalonia. And uh, uh, from the investment point of view, the ICT sector represents in Spain more than 14,000 million euros per year. <clears throat> if we want to focus on R&D in relation with ICT, I have to mention some um, Actions uh, like uh, specific uh, infrastructures. Uh, Mare Nostrum supercomputer in the Barcelona Supercomputer Center is one of the start of our infrastructure related with ICT. Next year, we'll be uh, installed the new Mare Nostrum 5, that uh, we hope uh, will be maybe the second or third uh, quicker supercomputer, uh, supercomputer in the world. Uh, at the present, we have a Marino Stream supercomputer that is located in, this is placed in, in 50 uh, uh, position or ranking uh, top uh, 500 supercomputer sites. We have some specific uh, um, platform in relation with energy, like uh, solar platform of Almeria. This is the largest solar energy research center in Europe. So we have uh, we we uh, we can offer uh, a nice environment for the cooperation between uh, <coughs> Spanish and, and Egyptian uh, companies. And uh, all the team from CDTI, we will do the effort to establish this uh, type of collaboration and don't hesitate to contact uh, uh, our team to develop more uh, collaborations. In relation with the uh, uh, companies, I don't want to mention specific ones, but uh, you know, you, you will have the opportunity in the event to, uh, to see some names and capacities that uh, they, uh, they will present. CTI has uh, supported this, uh, this sector, this ICT, as you uh, imagine. And uh, I would like to mention some, some um, Figures in relation with the, the money we have devoted to this uh, sector in the during the last four years, CTI has supported a total of 1,400 R&D projects in ICT, more than almost 900 million euros uh, as a direct contribution from CDTI to companies, and more than 600 million euros in in uh, um, uh, <clears throat> diet funding. In relation to Egypt, uh, I would like to mention that uh, we um, always can uh, have fun, a very nice collaboration for all the agencies in Egypt, especially from, from ITIDA, that this is a very nice agency working on, on ICT. But, uh, we started uh, our relationship with Egypt in 2013. In 2016, I have, um, I have mentioned before, we signed two memorandum of understanding with uh, two agencies, uh, the um, Science and Technology Development Fund, 
FSTDF uh, Agency and, and the Information Technology Industry Development Agency, ITIDA. The Memorandum of Understanding signed with ITIDA was renewed on uh, July 2019 for another three years. This agreement allowed both agencies to create the IT Egyptian uh, Spanish IT Innovation Program, SETIP, as, as we know uh, in, in, uh, in Spain. We are launching now the th fifth call for, of ACTIP in this event, and, and uh, I will um, I want to thank uh, ITIDA uh, Agency all the efforts to uh, collaborate with uh, um, CDTI in launching this, uh, this call. This year, both agencies uh, we have mobilized more than twenty ideas of projects, and uh, we have financed some uh, projects in the relation with autonomous mobility. Um, photovoltaic uh, plant management or efficient irrigation using ICT technologies. As uh, you can imagine, this uh, type of uh, um, uh, activities and sectors are uh, quite critical um, in Spain and also in Egypt. So the collaboration is welcome for uh, promoting these uh, um, important sectors in our economies. You will have the opportunity to know one of uh, these projects in uh, these events, thanks to the leader companies and, and researchers to whom I, I thank being uh, with us today. And uh, uh, before to, to give the, the word to the next speakers, uh, I, uh, I would like to uh, highlight that uh, I am convinced that uh, the concerted efforts of CDTI and ITIDA will bring LTD cooperation between Spain and Egypt and uh, we will uh, develop a higher level of uh, technology um, in uh, this collaboration that uh, we will achieve a nice result that uh, we will see for the next years in our market. Thank you very much and uh, welcome to this um, specific online event that I hope uh, we will have the opportunity in the near future to celebrate uh, in, in, in a present way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ponce, for this nice and interesting introduction and for your welcoming words. You can turn on your turn off your camera now and your micro. And now it's turn to turn to hear Mr. Amer Mahfouz, the CEO from Itida, uh, opening words. Please, Mr. Mahfouz. Hi, welcome. It's your turn now. Hello, good morning, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Javier, CDTI General Director, for the wonderful opening remarks and for organizing this important webinar. Good morning, everybody, our colleagues at ITIDA and CDTI, all attendees from Egypt and Spain. I would like to start by wishing you and your families my personal best for your health and safety in these difficult times. It is our pleasure, Javier, for collaborating with CDTI of Spain to open the fifth call for proposals on research and development projects in the IT industry through our Egyptian Spanish IT innovation program. In fact, it's one of ETIDA's key mandates to bring value to Egyptian ICT industry by fostering collaboration between industry and academia. Uh, aiming at developing R&D-based innovative products and services that put Egyptian ICT companies in a leading position in the ICT market, both locally and internationally. <clears throat> also, I would like uh, to add here that um, ITIDA key mandate uh, is not only for the IT industry, but as well for the electronics industry in terms of uh, manufacturing and uh, design. Uh, additionally, ITIDA is both a focal point for foreign investors and a strategic advisors to multinational companies investing in the Egyptian ICT sector. Uh, we are responsible for improving Egypt's global IT competitiveness by maximizing the export of IT services, applications, and products. And that is why we adopt a progressive approach and adhere to the public-private partnership model. 
restoring to regional and international cooperation whenever possible. Last week, we signed a memorandum of understanding with the Global Giant Visa for uh, global payment for uh, to support our entrepreneurship community and encourage local startups to develop innovative fintech solutions. In the next week, we are co-launching a startup launchpad program with the American University in Cairo, a member of the Babson Collaborative Organization, targeting innovative entrepreneurs. The program aims to expand the number of tech-based startups around Egypt. We are spreading digital innovation hubs in six universities across Egypt to encourage entrepreneurship and innovation among the ICT community through providing ideal spaces for ideation, mentoring, co-working, venture demos, and product launches, as well as other collaborative activities. All these endeavors seize the momentum we are witnessing in the area of innovation and thriving entrepreneurship ecosystem, making Egypt the next go-to destination for technology startups. In fact, Egypt is home to one of the fastest growing startup ecosystems in the world. And maybe let me share with you some statistics uh, and reports. The 2020 Global Startup Ecosystem Report by Startup Genome and the Global Entrepreneurship Network highlighted Cairo as the perfect test bed for innovation and attractive market for scalability. Thanks for the large customer market of 20 million young and tech savvy consumers. The report also ranked Cairo as one of the top 10 global ecosystems for affordable talent in 2020, and one of the top 10 Africa and Middle East ecosystem in funding. Uh, and let me give as well some uh, numbers. Um, for example, the median salary of a programmer uh, in Egypt is about $6K per year. The global average is about 42K dollars. So that gives uh, an, uh, maybe an idea about the scale of the affordable uh, talent that we have. Also, we have about 500,000 university graduates each year that is added to the talent pool and uh, the local uh, workforce that we have. According to Magnet Venture uh, investment report, Egypt maintained its leading rank of 2019 by the number of deals, accounting for 25% of all transactions in the MENA region, which is Middle East and North Africa, in the first half of 2020, nearly about 140 million US dollars year to date. This all has helped the ICT sector to maintain its growth in the last fiscal year, achieving a growth rate of over 15%, and it is the fastest uh, growing sector year over year here in Egypt. And accounting for about 108 billion Egyptian pounds of revenue, uh, revenue compared to 93 billion in the preceding fiscal year. The sectors contributing to the GDP, contribution to the GDP was about 4.4%, compared to about 4% in the previous fiscal year and 3.2% uh, during the fiscal year 2018-2019. And with a target of reaching more than 8% uh, within the coming three years. All this, uh, and this all comes along with Egypt's vision of achieving digital transformation represented in building digital Egypt and in alignment with Egypt Vision 2030 that reflects the state long-term strategic plan to achieve sustainable development principles and objectives in all areas, among which is promoting increased knowledge, innovation, and scientific research in all areas. ITIDA 
and the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology have not been far apart from all this, as we always strive to build and foster an ecosystem that encourages entrepreneurship and spurs creativity. We also seek to promote research and development, innovation and entrepreneurship in the field of ICT to drive sector growth, support sustainable national development and position Egypt as a regional innovation hub. Too early than all of these, ITIDA has been totally aware of the importance of linking the academia with the ICT market needs and accordingly devised its ITAC program in late 2006, which stands out as the oldest and probably the only Egyptian funding program that fosters collaborative research between academia and IT industry. With the, global, with the goal of developing innovative products that exploit the capabilities in universities to put Egyptian industry in a leading position, both locally and internationally. Now I will leave it to my colleague, Dr. Amr Safwat, to shed light uh, on later, to shed light on later, uh, later on during uh, his speaking slot today. And with that, I'm happy to give the floor for my colleague, Noah Shaban, who will speak about Egypt's ICT ecosystem in a nutshell. We will be looking forward to seeing the positive impact the Egyptian and Spanish companies can bring to the ICT community. Have a great day, everyone. And thank you, Ave, and thank you again, Javier, for organizing the online seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mahfouz. Before we start with the next speaker, I would like to thank you especially both of you, Mr. Bonfe and Mr. Mahfouz, for sharing your time with us today. We know you have a very busy agenda, so it's very important for us to have you here today with us. Also, before starting with the next speaker, I would like to make some technical remarks. Attendees' cameras and micros must be off. If you want to share a question, please do it, please do it through the Q&I panel, questions and answer panel. Please check that you know where it is and leave the questions for the end of each speech. After each speech, I will read some questions and some other question, questions will need to be answered by email. I will now introduce our na next speaker, is Ms. Noha Shavan. She is the International Business Development Manager at ITIDA, and she is going to give us um, a look at some interesting data about ICTs in Egypt. Please, Ms. Noha Shavan, can you share your screen now? Hi, welcome. Hi, thank you very much, and good, after, good morning, everyone. I'm Noha Shavan, International Business Development Manager at ITIDA. Thank you very much for availing the platform to shed light on Egypt's value proposition when it comes to the outsourcing industry. So let me share with you the presentation, please. Okay. So as engineer Amr Mahfouz has already mentioned, when it comes to Egypt's economy during the past year, so the GDP has grown by 5.6% in 2019, and when it comes to the FDI, we have reached $7.7 .7 billion in 2019. Coming to the ICT sector, as you can see here, that the number of uh, the amount of expert revenues within the past year reached $4.16 billion. And the ICT sector is the fastest growing sector by 13% growth, and it's the largest contributor to the GDP. And currently, we have more than 174,000 offshoring jobs. Coming to the ecosystem, and again, uh, stressing on engineer Amr uh, uh, note, we have a data protection law which has already issued in compliance, in compliance with the GDPR. We are ranked number 14 globally as per the ITU for the cyber crimes law. And we have the e-signature law where ITIDA has already been integrated and established by this law. 
We have a new investment law, which has been already updated in 2017, which makes it easier for any investor to come and establish here in Egypt only within 72 hours, and it's a one-stop shop. Also, we have the Intellectual Property Rights Center, which is affiliated with the WIPO, and we have several eight economic courts, uh, courts across the country and the Regional Center for International Commercial Arbitration. Here are some highlights regarding Egypt uh, when it comes to our positioning and the increased global confidence by the prominent consultancy firms worldwide. So we can see that the last one is uh, by the UNCTAD where it has already in June uh, addressed Egypt as Africa top FDI destination. Coming to our rankings within the, within the outsourcing industry, as you can see here, a lot of the prominent consultancy firms worldwide has acknowledged Egypt's positioning. So we can see Ryan's, uh, Ryan's strategic advisory. IDC has uh, mentioned that Egypt is one of the fastest growing offshore destinations in the world, along with the German outsourcing destination and AT Kearney, where we have been ranked back in 2010 number four, however, we dropped to the 16th due to only the political instability that the country has witnessed, but we are considered to be number one in the Middle East and Africa region, and currently we are ranked number 14 at the top global service location. And last but not least, the CBR, which has already uh, ranked Egypt as, as IT center of the world, and of course Gartner, which is considered to be the Bible of the outsourcing industry, has ranked Egypt in 2016, 17, and as well as 19 as a primary location in EMEA for global delivery of IT and business services. Coming to Egypt's value proposition, we have, it mainly consists of six main pillars. We have the innovation, developed industry, talent pool, cost competitiveness, pivotal location, and the government support. As you can see here on the left-hand side, coming to the talent pool, we're a, a huge population of over 100 million of which 50% are within the age range of 15 to 44, which makes us a young population. Confirming what engineer Amr has already mentioned that on annual basis, we have more than half a million graduates from our universities and institutes, of which 50,000 plus are with IT related degrees and the rest are eligible for the BPO industry. And we're serving more than 100 countries here from Egypt with more than 20 languages spoken. However, we have we have five main languages here in Egypt, English, the Spanish, the French, the German, and the Italian, and we're considered to be a low attrition rate or a turnover destination compared to the other countries. As you can see on the right-hand side here, coming to the cost competitiveness, that the annual salary of a junior software developer, Esther Gartner, compared to the other competing countries within Eastern Europe, like Hungary, Poland, Czech and Romania, Bulgaria, South Africa, is very much competitive. So it's mainly, and the cost per FTE of Egypt compared to Eastern European countries is 60 to 70% less in cost. And at the bottom here, you will see a presidential initiative where we are mandated by His Excellency, the President, to train um, over the emerging technologies, more than 16,000, and it's, this, it's an online training, it's over the MOOCs, edX, Coursera, and Udacity. And here coming to our pivotal location, Egypt is considered to be in the center of the world. It's only a five hour flight radius when it comes to Europe and when it comes to this time zone, we're connected to 60 plus countries with more than 13 different marine routes. And when it comes to the business continuity, we, have, we are considered to be the best option to the US and Asia. And we have free trade agreements covering 70 plus countries across Africa, Asia, and Europe. Coming to the right-hand side and the government support, which is represented by ITIDA. So we support foreign direct investors or multinational companies to come and establish here in Egypt within the outsourcing realm by providing them with two types of the support. The first one is the logistical support where we respond to any request for information regarding the market. We arrange due diligence visits for investors to come and sit here with the multinationals, but currently due to the COVID, it's all online. So we schedule online calls with the multinationals operating within the, main, the same segment to understand the challenges, opportunities, how they're growing, as well as we aid in real estate due diligence. And we act as a liaison between the investor and any public or private entity facilitating any obstacles facing them. The other form of support that we provide for FDI is a financial support 
where the only commitment for the company is to hire Egyptian employees exporting services over a period of three years. And in return, what we do is that we subsidize percentage of the training costs incurred by the company for the capacity building of the Egyptian employees. And we subsidize percentage of the telecom costs. And last but not least, we facilitate granting the voice over IP license. Here we will go for some success stories for multinationals operating through the three main segments of the outsourcing, the BPO, the IPO, and the KPO. So as we can see here that we have IBM, they've been operational in Egypt since 1954. And however, now they have seven tech regional centers in Egypt employing more than 1,500 employees. We have Dell EMC, they've been operating in Egypt since 2009. They have their center of excellence here in Egypt and they have more than 1,400 employees where 48% of their workforce are females. And the beauty of Dell EMC is that they're only, not only increasing in terms of headcount, they're also increasing in terms of adding new business units. And at the bottom of the screen here, you will see lots of other logos of other multinationals operating within the same segment of the, BC, of the ITO. Here we can see Vodafone Shared Services or Vodafone, they started back in 2002 with the typical call center or customer care operations. Currently they have more than 7,500 employees and 55% of their workforce are females. And they're not only working within the BPO and the customer care, they have their center of excellence for the AI and the smart city solutions supporting the whole group here in Egypt. So they evolved within the value chain and they moved up higher within the value chain. We have Orange Business Services. They have 2,500 2, employees operating in Egypt and their center is considered to be one of the five major centers across OBS group. We have Concentrics and Teleperformance operating within the BPO and the customer care and they are employing more than 2,000 employees here in Egypt and serving 80 for teleperformance. They're serving 80 countries in 25 different languages along with, as you can see, within the shared services uh, vertical as well. We have HSBC, we have PepsiCo, we have Nestle, etc. And moving up the value chain, and especially we're talking about the KPO and the knowledge process outsourcing. So we have Microsoft Advanced Technology Lab here in Egypt. They're having 5,000 employees and they're providing software engineering talent and uh, speech processing, as well as Siemens Mentor Graphics. They're having their largest R&D center outside of the US here in Egypt. And of course, our pride and joy, which is Valeo, the French company, they're having their R&D center here in Egypt. In addition to, they just established two new centers in Egypt and the management has decided that the center uh, in India uh, shall be closed and it, they uh, ramped up here in Egypt and the center is in China is, is already under the management of the center in Egypt and they have more than 2000 engineers and they're providing the embedded software development for the automotive industry. So, you know, like the automatic parking system for the BMW and the, the Mercedes is already implemented and designed here in Egypt by Egyptian engineers. And last but not least, we have IDC, they're providing consultancy services here from Egypt. Thank you very much, and we're open for questions. Thank you, Ms. Siavan. It's been a very interesting presentation and very interesting, interesting data from Egypt. I'm going to check if we have any questions yet, mm -hmm. or maybe we can go ahead with the next speaker and when we finished the presentation of the ICT ecosystems, both in Spain and in Egypt, we will read some questions. So please, Clara, you are the next speaker. Clara Pezuela is the president for the technological platform in ICT in Spain, Planetic. Hello, good morning. Thank you very much for inviting uh, Planetic. I'm representing here the platform as uh, president. So um, I had the mission to introduce you, uh, which is the situation of uh, digital technologies, like uh, we would like uh, to, to call the ICT sector in uh, our country. So first of all, I will give you some uh, big figures about the industry. Uh, some of them have been already introduced uh, by the director of uh, CTTI, but I just uh, want to, to go to some 
small, deta small details that I think are uh, quite relevant. So uh, basically this uh, sector in Spain includes almost uh, 35,000 companies, uh, which once uh, up to 60% are small and medium enterprises. So these companies uh, employ around uh, uh, half million employees um, in which only the 35% are women, and if we go to the executive positions, only the 6% of uh, these companies have women in the boards. Uh, otherwise, uh, this uh, industry uh, generates a turnover of uh, uh, 100,000 million euros, and the contribution to the Spanish economy is about 3.8% uh, of GDP. Uh, the most of activity, uh, as uh, has been already mentioned, uh, are, is, in the, is, is in Madrid and uh, Catalonia uh, regions, as they are the most populated and, and also the most uh, urban and digitalized. Uh, with regards to, the, to research and innovation, it's uh, worthy to mention that uh, in, the, in the last uh, year, the uh, increment of the IT companies that are uh, devoted uh, to research and innovation has increased uh, 6%. It's not a lot, but it's a significant figure. This means that uh, we count on the 11,000 researchers in ICT industry. These uh, figures belong to the annual report that is uh, um, done about uh, the, IT, the ICT sector in Spain. If, uh, if we go to the um, implementation of digital plans in the country, of course, we are within the European Union, so uh, they are completely aligned with the European digital strategies. And the plans are mainly focused on four axes. Uh, the first one is uh, the deployment of networks and services for connectivity, the, the digitalization of the economy, what is called uh, the economy of data, the digitalization of the public administration uh, in order to be agile and uh, more close uh, and closer to the citizen and the, the increment of the skills in digital competencies. If we uh, looking at this, uh, looking at this axis, if we uh, look at the current situation of the country, we can find some gains and pains. So uh, as uh, well done things, uh, we can find that uh, we uh, have an excellent digital infrastructure network. Uh, for internet, for telco, for supercomputing that is supporting this digitalization process. Uh, we count also in the country with companies that are leaders in their sectors, like in food, tourism, uh, finance. Our cities are quite modern and uh, the IT sector in Spain is very dynamic and agile, able to adapt uh, to the new things and uh, new situations. And we can say that we have a good level of digitalization of the public administration. So many of the um, transactions or interactions with the public administration can be done el electronically. On the other way, uh, we have some, some pain, some uh, still uh, uh, room for improvement in the, in the digitalization of the industry, especially when we talk about manufacturing, automotive and so on. And uh, moreover, the, the, the digitalization of uh, uh, micro and small enterprises. Most of the companies in Spain belong to this category, to uh, small and medium enterprises that uh, um, still require a lot of dig digitalization in order to come up with uh, new ages and uh, to be competitive. Uh, also, uh, we have to work in, the, uh, in improving the digital capabilities of the population. And uh, this is also related with the digital gap we have between uh, urban and rural areas. So we need to, um, to get that uh, the, uh, the digital competencies will be homogeneous through, uh, over, through, through all the uh, population. Uh, so uh, just for mentioning some uh, technologies uh, where uh, our country is, uh, is, uh, is key or is uh, strong, uh, this list is not exhaustive, of course, but it's representative of, uh, of uh, what uh, we can pro uh, provide from a technical point of view. Uh, we are leaders in the 5G technology deployment in Europe. Uh, we are also uh, quite present in the cybersecurity technology as we, as we are one of the uh, European poles in capabilities uh, around uh, cybersecurity. We are one of the 10 countries with major production of video games, and uh, we are a, a very good location for uh, media audiovisual production. We have the talent, capacities, and logistics for um, 
enterprises uh, of media production to set up here their infrastructures. And uh, we are also a very quite uh, profile in micro and nanotechnology, uh, providing uh, devices, chips, and uh, sensors. So we have specialized centers and uh, niche small and medium enterprises uh, that are uh, providing a great added value in this, in this field. So uh, I don't want uh, to avoid to mention uh, our position in artificial intelligence. Uh, we have uh, very well-known research groups in this area and also uh, three of the digital innovation hubs that are uh, promoted by the European Commission in this field. Uh, here is a kind of, uh, well, the official or kind of official map of uh, AI competencies in Spain, uh, considering both public and, par and private institutions and companies. And here uh, in Planetic, we did a, a report about the status of uh, artificial intelligence in Spain that, uh, well, unfortunately, is only in Spanish, but uh, it provides uh, an overview of uh, which is the situation from a technological and uh, a sector point of view uh, uh, with regards to the artificial intelligence. So uh, why Planetic is presenting uh, these uh, capabilities of the sector? Well, because we are uh, the, te the technology platform uh, that is um, a reference for digital technologies in Spain. Uh, uh, we are one of the technological platforms under the umbrella of the Science and Innovation Ministry through the uh, National Agency of uh, Research. And uh, we, uh, from the platform, uh, provide an integrated vision of uh, the research and innovation in digital technologies. We are covering the full stack in the sector from micro nano technologies, uh, IT systems, software, I IT services. And in the end, it's a forum of all the Spanish players in the research and innovation for digital technologies. So our main goal is to represent uh, this, uh, this sector, uh, this is, uh, the Spanish digital technologies research and innovation sector, promote the use of, the, of digital technologies in vertical sectors to foster the digitalization in the country and uh, to define uh, which are uh, under our um, uh, vision, the trends in research and innovation for the medium term. Uh, as part of our objective is always is also to expand the visibility of the of, of this sector uh, in Europe and worldwide and uh, this is why these kind of events are so crucial for us in order to disseminate uh, what is uh, the capacities and competencies of uh, the research and innovation uh, in digital technologies in Spain. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we uh, provide uh, an annual research strategic uh, agenda for digital technologies where we uh, identify which are the key technologies uh, that are relevant for uh, the research and innovation in our, in, in our country, of course, aligned with uh, European trends and also how these uh, technologies are applied or materialized into specific uh, domains. Uh, currently, we are uh, around 290 members. Uh, as you can see, our type of member uh, corresponds uh, quite well with the average, with the, with the percentage of uh, small and medium enterprises in the sector. So half of our members are uh, small and medium enterprises. And, uh, but we count on the many different types of uh, members, industry, uh, industry um, large companies, um, universities, research centers, and so on. So uh, currently, uh, yes, I'm finished. <laughs> currently, uh, we have uh, this steering board, which is uh, managing the strategy, um, the strategy of the of the platform, where all these uh, type of members are representing, and we are focused on different working groups. Uh, currently, we are leading the big data and artificial intelligence uh, interplatform group. Uh, but also participating in other focus on smart cities and uh, now focus on digital health, urban mobility and digital innovation hubs. So uh, just to finalize uh, some hints about uh, how um, we can establish collaboration uh, with uh, Egypt. In this case, we think that uh, uh, through, through Planetic, uh, 
Uh, you can find uh, partners for joint projects uh, among all the members of the platforms. We can also participate in joint events like this one to exchange competencies of the two countries. We can promote in our network information about uh, Egypt, uh, uh, about news projects in digital technologies. And we can work in joint interests uh, like we can envisage tourism, agriculture, water management, the certification, and so on. Everything through our secretary, which is always uh, open and uh, ready to, to attend your uh, communications. So thank you very much for your time and I hope it helps. Thank you very much, Ms. Pezuela. Of course, it's been a very interesting presentation and I think very helpful. I can't see any question right now, so I'm going to remind everybody that this session is being recorded, that this recording will be, will be published through CDTI and ETDAS YouTube channels, and also the presentations will be made available for all the attendees. Okay, so I, there are no questions, so we are going to continue with the agenda. And it is now my turn as SAP Program Manager at CDTI to do my presentation. I'm going to talk to you about the call itself and also uh, how to submit the proposal. But before that, I would like to talk a little bit about CDTI. CDTI is the Spanish Innovation Agency created in 1977 with the aim of enhancing Spanish companies' competitiveness and international profile through innovation. At CDTI, we have a foreign technology action department with professionals based in Madrid like me and a foreign network with presence in over 20 countries. Our aim in these countries is to launch collaborations with other innovation funding agencies, just like ITIDA. And the result of these collaborations can be the launch of bilateral programs like SETIP. SETIP is a program to promote collaborations between Egyptians and Spanish entities in the execution of R&D projects in all areas of information technologies and its applications. These projects must be industry-driven and focused in the market and must imply the development or substantial improvement of products, processes, or services. They must have an international profile, meaning that the projects must, must be executed by a minimum consortium of three members one Egyptian company, one Egyptian research group, and one Spanish private company. The Egyptian research group must be led by a PI holding a PhD in ICT, and the Egyptian company must be registered at ITIDA database. If your company is not yet registered, you should contact ITIDA to learn how to register it. It's also important in these projects to know that all participants must participate in R&D activities and that the maximum budget per country is the 70% of the total budget of the project. If you don't have all your partners yet, you can check with uh, Planetic, as Clara Bezuela has just said, and you can also fulfill this template for partner, partner search. search. This template will be, available, will be available with the text of the call and you can send it to CDTI or ITIDA and we will distribute it among our contacts to help you find a partner. CDTI will use its mailing distribution list. So if you want to receive this kind of partner search, you need to go to our website and register for the distribution list for Egypt or ICT technologies. Additionally, if you are searching a partner, you can use our one-to-one -one meetings website, which is already available, where you can check other attendees' profiles and you can contact them to try to schedule bilateral meetings this afternoon or tomorrow morning. The thematic areas covered by the call are, as I said, all areas in information technologies and its applications. We've, we've had very different projects, like for example, a project using cloud-based platform to monitor crops, 
or a project developing autonomous transportation models. Where to find the call? It's quite easy to find it on the internet. We have published it in our website and using a web browser introducing SETIP CDTI or SETIP ITIDA, it's very easy to find them. The call will be officially launched next week on the 16th November, but at CDTI, we have already published the updated call. Remember that the deadline for the submission of proposals is March 25th, but please don't leave it for the last minute. We will now see the different steps, steps to be followed and it must take some time. The submission of the application must be done through CDTI electronic headquarters. Only through CDTI electronic head headquarters. You don't need to use ITIDA submission system. So the Egyptian partners and the Egyptian and the Spanish partners must work together to prepare an application that will, miss, will be submitted by the Spanish partners through CDTI electronic headquarters. You need to prepare a joint application form and a consortium agreement, some documents specific for the Egyptian applicants and some other documents specific for the Spanish company. Templates for all these documents are available together with the call or at CDTI electronic headquarters. To enter these electronic headquarters, you can easily find it on the internet again, and you must enter your private area. Of course, for the Spanish company, it can be the first time at these electronic headquarters, so they need to create their private area. It is quite easy to create it, and you only need to, prov to provide some details from the company, the address or contact details but you need to wait for confirmation and this confirmation of the user from cdti is done but is done but by workers at the office so it might take some time a few hours if you do it in the afternoon or maybe a few days if you're trying to register on the during the weekend or bank holidays so please take this into account when you want to register your company after registering your company you enter your private area and you are allowed to create a new application. You will be asked what kind of application you want to submit, and you need to select international project in the first menu and SETIP program in the second menu. After that, you will be asked to provide the title and the dates of your projects. Please remember that the expected duration of the projects in SETIP is between one and two years. And remember that according to the calendar that we have published with the call, we are expecting to have the final evaluations by September 2021. So maybe a good starting date would be October 2021. Once you have created your application, you will see this menu on your left. This is all the items of information that you have to fulfill. You have to click in on each of these items and use the modify button to introduce the information. Remember to use the recording button before moving forward to the next item. At the bottom of this menu, you will find the item documentation where you will find all the templates for all the documents you have to submit and also a guide on how to fulfill the online application form. Finally, you will find the browser where you can upload the nine documents we've been talking about. Once you have uploaded all the documents and, and fulfilled all the online application form, then you can send the, the proposal and CDTI will receive it. It's a good idea when you are preparing a, propos a proposal to let us know both CDTI and ITIDA so that we can help you and keep you updated with all the information. Once we receive the information, CDTI will share it with ITIDA, and both of us will check that you have provided all the information needed. We will also check that the proposal meets the international requirements of the call. If it doesn't, the proposal will be rejected. But if it does, it will start the technical evaluation. It's important here to note that ITIDA's and CDTI's evaluations are independent. We have different evaluators in both countries. And it's also important to note 
that while ITIDA is going to do the technical evaluation over the documents you have already presented, CDTI is going to ask this Spanish company to present a national funding application and you will be given 20 days to fulfill it. Again, the information should be more or less the same, but focusing on the participation of the Spanish company. Once we have that information, we will evaluate the proposal. And when we have the final evaluation, we will share it with CDTI and ITIDA. We will come to a mutual understanding and those projects who have positive evaluations in both countries will be given the international executive recognition and may opt for national funding. In the case of CDTI, this funding is a partially reimbursable aid that can co cover up to the 85% of the total approved budget of the Spanish company. Before I finish, I would like to remark some points of the Spanish budget and project. First of all, I said that the minimum consortium needs a Spanish company. Research institutes, universities, and technological centers are welcome to participate as self-funded or subcontracted. This subcontraction cost is eligible for CDTI and also other costs like technical costs or materials. It's also very important to remember that more than one company can participate in the project, but the minimum budget in R&D activities per company for CDTI would be 175,000 euros. This was all the information I wanted to share with you today. Of course, you can contact me when you want. Also, my colleague, Jose Manuel Duran, he is the delegate in North Africa and Middle East. And of course, I, we will be waiting for your questions right after the next presentation. Please, now it's turn, turn for Mr. Amer Sabwat from ITIDA. He is the program manager for SETIP at ITIDA. So Mr. Sabwat, are you ready for your presentation? Yes. Thank, you. You. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen now. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure uh, to be with you, and I would like to welcome uh, everyone in this uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Amr Safwat. I am the manager of uh, the iTech. Uh, in this presentation, uh, uh, we will focus on the proposal uh, and its uh, components. Uh, and uh, how it is evaluated. Um, the ITEC uh, stands for Information Technology uh, Academia Collaboration. Uh, it has a mission, uh, which is to bring value to Egyptian ICT industry uh, by fostering collaboration between industry and academia. We would like to have a product or service uh, that compete not only on the local level, but also on the uh, international level. Um, we, in the ITEC, we have been in, in, in this function for the last 15 years. We were established in 2006. We fund R&D projects. We have different schemes uh, for funding. Uh, in, in our funding scheme, we follow the NASA uh, technology readiness level. We start by level two and we end by level seven. That's to say we start by the idea and then we go to the product development. In the first, uh, in the first um, level, which is uh, a preliminary research projects, it is basically for the uh, university and it has a small budget, which is 250K Egyptian pounds. That's to say around uh, uh, 15 euro, K euro. Uh, in this stage, only universities are eligible to apply. And then we move from the PRP, preliminary research project, to the second level, which is the uh, advanced research project, the ARP. 
So we start by paper or pattern, proof of concept, and then we go to prototype. The ceiling in this case is, is 1.5 mega Egyptian pounds, that's to say around 80 uh, K euro. Uh, and the consortium in this case consists from a university and a company. Then the third funding scheme, we go from prototype to a product development. And in this case, the ceiling is 2.5 mega Egyptian pounds, that's to say around 140 K euro. Uh, for the last 15 years, we funded around 170 uh, projects. However, for the Egyptian Spanish ITIP, basically the focus is on the second level of funding and the third level. That's to say, we fund advanced research project and the product development projects only. The first scheme is not included in the Egyptian Spain ITIP. So the consortium in this case, it is an, uh, consists from Egypt and Spain. From Egypt, we have one university and one company, and the contribution from the Egyptian side should be greater than 30% of the total budget of the project. Meanwhile, from the Spanish side, as Christina just said, we, we need at least one company, and the contribution is, should be less than 70% from the total budget. To facilitate the submission process, uh, we only required submission to be a CDTI. There is no need to submit uh, the proposal at ET. As Christina said, uh, we have independent evaluation process. And as you can see in, during uh, this call, the submission is open for 21 weeks. The objective of these long durations is to facilitate the process of matchmaking and to uh, facilitate all the activities related to convening and writing the proposal and submission of the proposal and find the good partners. So this is the duration of the call is 21 weeks. By the end of the submission, we, uh, it's either and CDTI collaborate together we have the proposal, we send the proposal to two or three Egyptian reviewers. This independence review process ends by the decision, either proceed to presentation or reject. So in this case, we have the presentation in front of the steering committee of the ITEC. The steering committee is the governing body of the ITEC and they finalize the decision by accepting or rejecting the proposal. After accepting the proposal, we sign the contract. Usually the process take around uh, four to five months. So basically we are expecting for the accepted pro proposal uh, to uh, the start date should be around October. Uh, but let's focus now about the proposal contents and, and, and let's just go to the, our target. What are the contents of the proposal? Uh, general information, project outline, uh, participant data, a contribution to the project, the expertise of the participant, and the consortium agreement. More focus on the project outline. It is divided on several sections. We have the description, uh, innovation, and uh, technological develop development, uh, market applications, and milestone. So how are we gonna start? Uh, the basic start is just to start with the end in mind. What is the end? After writing the proposal, the proposal will be sent to the reviewer. And the reviewer will have a set of questions that should be answered. So what we're going to do basically is we're going to go through the evaluation process and what the expectation of the reviewers. For the evaluation, the proposal is evaluated from the eligibility criteria and there is a crucial criteria basic assessment, IT technology and innovation, uh, and marketing and competition. So let's go now with the eligibility criteria. In the eligibility criteria, there are three questions. The objective of the project, is it civilian? And do we have a product or process or service? And there is 
the cooperation uh, in the form of a specific project. So where we gonna, we should put the answer of these questions. So basically in the proposal, this is in the general information and the project outline. Then the crucial criteria, and this is really very important. The first one is the financial capacity of the partners. And the second one is a formal agreement. And as you can see in the submission package, you have the participant data in which they describe their financial capacity and they have also to submit the consortium agreement signed and stamped from all the uh, applicant in the proposal. This is a crucial criteria and they should be present in the proposal. The third uh, criteria in the evaluation, it is a basic assessment. Uh, in, in, when we are saying basic assessment, so basically we're talking about the partnership and the project structure. In the partnership, we are expecting that both parties, parties are participating in the project and there are some sort of a balanced partnership. We are expecting added, added value for this collaboration. Uh, we are expecting to find technology capacity for both parties. Uh, similarly, from the project structure, we, we would like to see the methodology, the work breakdown structures, milestones and deliverables. That's to say, we, where we're gonna see this in the proposal, we're gonna see this in the proposal in the project outline and in the contribution to the project and the expertise of the participants. The fourth evaluation criteria is the technology and the innovation. The proposal and the project should, should bring a new added value in terms of technology and in terms of innovation. So in the proposal, which is the part of the outline, when you're gonna die and describe your proposal, it is expected to have uh, 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 describing the, what is the advances in the technology and what is the degree of innovation which exists in the proposal. Finally, the market and the competition, uh, the proposal should indicate uh, some sort of market analysis, uh, market feasibility, uh, uh, return of investment, the competitive of the proposed solution with respect to the existing solution. So in these two questions, uh, the expectations to find the answer in the project outline and in the consortium agreement. Saying this, there are some very important points that should be avoided in writing the proposal. Basically, all previous work should be cited. The proposal should be good written. We are not expecting to find a scanned images for the proposal. Uh, all statistics should be, uh, the source should be cited. Figures should be referenced, referenced in the text. Uh, we are not expecting poor writing or linguistic mistakes. Also, the proposal should not be too lengthy or contain redundant information. So all these points should be considered very carefully when you are writing your proposal. From the Egyptian side, also we are requiring what is called key success indicators. The key success indicators, uh, basically it is an Excel sheet where the applicant describe their previous achievement in the ITEC projects and their expectation uh, as deliverable from the current proposal. Uh, getting to the presentation phase, that to say the proposal passed the first evaluation phase and went to the presentation. The presentation contains an introduction. The applicant introduced the team and the industrial partner and the objective relevance to the ICT industry. And then we're gonna go to the uh, technical part, which is basically describing the existing solution, the proposed solution and the advantage of the proposed solution. We should go in the presentation also and we should cover the marketing. We should cover the business plan and also the execution. Uh, the length of the uh, presentations is 25 minutes and every point should have its evidence in the presentation. Uh, again, I would like to thank you for your participation. Please mark your calendar. Uh, we're gonna, uh, the opening will be next week. We will close on March 25. Uh, this is here that link to the ETIDA uh, website concerning ESITIP project and also a YouTube channel 
for to describe the ITEC activities. Thank you again and wish you good luck in your submission. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sabwat. We are receiving some questions now. Uh, before I start reading some questions, I would like to tell you that uh, those unread questions will be answered by email. And if you have two specific questions, maybe you want to talk about the viability of your project, you can schedule a meeting with uh, ITIDA or CDTI representatives through our one-to-one -one meetings website. We will be available this afternoon and tomorrow morning. Okay, we have a question asking if the proposal can contain kind of technology transfer from Spain to Egypt. Of course, it can contain technology transfer from Spain to Egypt. Maybe the most important point here to take into account is that all the participants must participate in R&D activities. So not all the project can be technology, technology transfer or a commercial agreement between partners. All of you must participate in the R&D activities. Uh, Dr. Sawat, would you like to add something to this question? I, I, uh, think... yes, I don't have any, uh, no, this is correct. What Christina just said, um, I'm expecting there is a technology transfer definitely between the uh, Egyptian side and the Spanish side and also uh, or either vice versa from Egypt to Spain. But in the proposal, there is an added value. There is a collaboration and there is some sort of balanced partnership between both parties. This is the issue. No one will take the whole technical part and the second party just will do a, a very simple work. It is expected to have a balanced partnership in terms of technology. Okay, thank you. We are also asked, what are the main challenges, solutions, technologies of interest for this call? Um, uh, for CDTI, we are open to all kinds of projects. So maybe Dr. Sawat, would you like to answer that question? Uh, as long as it is, it is, um, uh, it is IT related, ITEC uh, is willing to fund all projects. This is by mandate. ITEC is willing to fund all projects that is uh, IT related. We are open to all projects, no specific area of, uh, of research, um, as long as it is IT enabled. Great. We have published in the call some technology trend areas that are like more interesting, but again, any application or any information technology is allowed for these projects. Okay, another question for you, Dr. Sabwat. Is there a budget distribution limitation between Egyptian company and university? Uh, no, uh, there is no budget limitation. It is usually you have the whole fund uh, for the ARP, it is 1.5 mega Egyptian pound. For the PDP, 2.5 mega Egyptian pound. We don't interfere in the distribution. Uh, it is based upon the agreement between the Egyptian company and the Egyptian university. Okay. okay, and finally, I think it's very interesting to talk about the partner search because I think maybe at this point is interesting for all the attendees. So if you're looking for a partner, remember that you can contact ITIDA and CDTI representatives to help you find a partner. You can fulfill the partner search template. You can also check ITIDA's uh, database and maybe, uh, Dr. Sawat, you can give us some more information about this database. In, uh, in Egypt, uh, we, uh, in ITIDA uh, website, uh, all companies are registered work of, uh, working in ICT, are registered in ITIDA database, and it is open uh, for all, uh, uh, for everyone. Just you can go to the website and you go to the search database and you, got, you should look for whatever company, uh, which activities 
uh, are related uh, to yours. So it is very simple search on ETDA website. However, uh, I just I would like to emphasize for the partner search, usually it goes like this, uh, the Egyptian side contact us and we, he, he writes a search uh, uh, partnership and we take this document and we send it to CDTI, CDTI takes the document and look for companies in Spain and it, is, it goes also vice versa. So the, for the partnership search, CDTI send us the document and we uh, share this document with the Egyptian companies and Egyptian universities till we, we find the good match. Great. So now we have a question about travel expenses. I'd like to remark uh, that for CDTI, we cannot accept travel expenses at its, as itself. I mean, we are covering some indirect costs which are calculated as a percentage percentage over the personal cost, and you can include those travel costs there, but not as a as a as a single cost. Okay. And uh, what about uh, Itida? Uh, no, yeah, this, actually, we have a very uh, specific conditions, very clear conditions for the travel. Uh, we uh, in this call or even with the Spanish uh, partnership, we don't allow travel. Uh, without attending a technical conference or an exhibition. So uh, travel cost is allowed only for uh, technical conference and an exhibition. Okay. Okay, I, I think we could uh, go ahead with the presentation. Maybe you can read one more. Is it open for public institutions or researching, for instance, about geological resources, GIS projects, or floods? As long as there is an information technology application, I think all these fields would, would be covered. Do you agree with that, Dr. Sabwa? Uh, from our side, uh, we need to have a uh, a private company and a public or oh, public or private university. So it is an academic institute plus private company. In okay. Egypt, on the uh, on the Spanish Egypt. side, remember that public institutions can be subcontracted by a company, but the obligation is that there is a private company. Yes, that's it. Okay. So I think we shall continue now. Thank you all for your questions. The rest of the questions will be answered by email. And it's time now to receive some more practical information about the call. Uh, talking with the survivors from a previous call, CIPOLIF is a project which has been funded by SETIP and today, today is going to be presented by Dr. Ahmed Khattab. He is the PI at the University of Cairo of this CIPOLIF project. Dr. Khattab, can you please share your screen now? Uh, thank you, Christina, for the introduction. And um, good morning, everybody. My name is Ahmed Khattab. I'm an associate professor in uh, Cairo University in the Electronics and Communication Engineering Department. And today, I'm presenting the success story of the SIP Olive project by the ECT program uh, on behalf of my uh, partners, Smart Tech Systems in Egypt and Ceresco from Spain. In my talk, I will first introduce our consortium. Then I will give a brief overview of the SIP Olive project, what is its motivation and what have been uh, done so far and what is the expected outcome and the impact of the project. And I will conclude with some practical tips that might be helpful for the future applicants of uh, such an important collaborative uh, funding opportunity. As Christina and Dr. Safat have indicated that the consortium must have an academic institution, which is Cairo University in our case, uh, from Egypt, and uh, there must be a uh, Spanish company, which is Risco from Spain, and um, uh, an Egyptian company, which is Smartic System. And in the next few slides, I will give you how we managed to form a rich and diverse uh, consortium, which have different backgrounds and different uh, skills that uh, complement each other in order to achieve the expected outcomes of our project. So I will start by the Spanish partners and the leader is uh, Ceresco. Ceresco is a pioneering uh, Spanish uh, national company which was established in May 1969. Uh, and since then, uh, the company has uh, 
extended its uh, its offices to have four Spanish uh, offices in different uh, Spanish cities, and they became international and have uh, offices in Portugal, Ecuador, Costa Rica, Colombia, and Bolivia. Ceresco is dedicated to the provision of ICT services and solutions with more than 700 professionals with different sets of expertise. More specifically, Ceresco has five business areas. The first business area is the infrastructures and system and services, which are dedicated to the IT consulting uh, related to systems, communication, service desks, security, and business continuity. The other uh, business area is the payroll and the human resources, which are, which are related to payroll outsourcing and the human resource services. Cerisco is also working in cartography and uh, cadastral management. Cerisco is also providing consulting and software services in uh, different uh, programming languages and technologies with data science and artificial intelligence and uh, data analytics uh, services. Also, Cerisco is working on the digital transformation services for SMEs and other uh, companies. Uh, Suresco is partnering and collaborating with uh, several uh, national uh, technological centers uh, through subcontracting, as indicated by uh, Christina and Dr. Safat. More specifically, they are collaborating with the Agroforestry uh, Pathology Research Group at the University of Cordoba, AGR 216, which is a center dedicated to the uh, etiology and epidemiology and control of the olive fruit fl uh, fly disease or uh, olive fruit or fruit uh, diseases. Another partner or another uh, collaborator is the state agency of the Higher Council of Scientific Investigations uh, through the Center for Soil Science and Applied Biology of the Seguera, CEBSCSIC, which is a multidisciplinary research center that carries out research in three related technical areas, which are the agricultural sciences, food science, and technology. Um, now, moving to the Egyptian um, uh, partners. I will start by the, uh, the company Smartic Systems, which was established in 2008 by Dr. Mohammed Khairi. Uh, the focus of Smartic System is on embedded system, software engineering and software development uh, and telecommunication services. Smartic was awarded more than uh, 10 million Egyptian bonds in R&D funds from national and international funding agency. Uh, Smartic is a member of the International Officer Web of Objects Consortium uh, with more than 30 organizations. The Smartic system fully designed and implement several innovative solutions, such as building automation solutions. Uh, Smartic is the development arm of uh, US and Canadian companies, such as uh, Trade Legs and uh, Feudus. Smartic has more than 70 employees and consultants, including four BHD holders, with a total of more than 160 many year, uh, years of experience. And one of the important uh, contributions of Smartic system is the provision of uh, 3G and LTE network optimization services to major uh, operators such as Vodafone and Etisalat through the Tempo software tool. And these are some of the products and services that Smartic System is providing in IoT, in hardware design and implementation, embedded systems, telecommunication, and smart buildings and smart cities. The academic partner of this consortium is Cairo University, uh, represented through the Center for Wireless Studies. The Center for Wireless Studies, or CWS, was established in 2008 as a hub for telecommunication and networking research in Cairo University. The focus of the research in the CWS is on communication system, from both from theory and implementation points of view. And we have received more than 15 million Egyptian bonds from different national and international funding agencies. And we are partnering with several uh, universities in the US and Saudi Arabia, in addition to some big companies such as Vodafone. Uh, we have more than 100 papers in reputable journals and conferences and book chapters. We have awarded 30 or more than 30 master degrees, and most of, of our graduates go to the US for PhDs uh, in their careers. Also, uh, the Center for Wireless Studies is collaborating with uh, professors and uh, teams from uh, the university, uh, the, the faculty of uh, agriculture to help us in the execution of this project. Now I have presented our uh, consortium and now we are ready to present our project, the cloud-based integrated platform for monitoring best salinity and efficient irrigation in olive precision farming, which is the SEP Olive project. The SEP Olive project has received a total of 
323,563 uh, euros as the total, 123,367 of them is awarded uh, to Ceresco through CTDI, and 1.5 million Egyptian pounds is awarded to the Egyptian partners through ITIDA and ITEC within the framework of the bilateral uh, Hispano Egyptian uh, Collaboration for Technological Co Cooperation. The motivation of the same olive projects come from the fact that both Spain and Egypt are the two main olive producers worldwide. With Spain is the largest olive oil producer in the world with more than 45% of the production. And Spain is the first country in cultivated area. Uh, for example, uh, in 2017, Spain has 2.6 million hectares devoted for the cultivation of olives. On the other hand, Egypt is one of the leading uh, um, table olive producers with 18% of the worldwide production. So the olive sector is a very important um, sector for the economy of both countries, and it presents an excellent opportunity and has a potential if ICT technology is used in such an important domain to improve the performance and have an added value uh, through uh, such a section. The actions or the research and development actions in these projects uh, is very diverse and cover different things, ranging from embedded systems, IoT, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and precision agriculture. As you see in this uh, simple diagram of the project, we have agriculture module developed by the cultural partners. We have the hardware that is collecting data, and we have the software that have different purposes, starting from storing the data, applying artificial intelligence and machine learning, and providing an application interface to the users. Uh, the estimated uh, duration of the project is two years that had started in October 1st, 2019. And the activities is led by the company Smart Tech System and Service School with the cooperation with Cairo University. Uh, the product or the outcome of the project will be tested in several test bed or several pilot studies in both Egypt and Spain. For example, in Egypt, we have a group that we will test the performance of the system at. The olive group that we are using has trees of different ages ranging from four months to 33 years with different cell types, different irrigation uh, mechanisms with high salinity uh, profiles. And the group has uh, more than 14K trees of uh, multiple olive varieties from Egypt, Spain, and Italy. And the farm is owned by one of the international um, uh, olive, uh, exporter or, or producer and researcher. On the other hand, uh, the Spanish uh, test bed are, are spread across different farms for different reasons. For example, for pest monitoring, the platform will be tested in Sevilla, Cordoba, and Hayen uh, in order to uh, assess the performance of the olive verticillus prediction models. In order to assess also the management and, and monitoring of irrigation system, we, uh, the Spanish team will have a test bed in Valencia to validate the irrigation models. And the criteria for selection was to have new plantations and signs of one of the important diseases that affect the, uh, the, the olive uh, trees, which is the verticillium dahelia. And this is the total monitored area by all the Spanish test beds. Okay, so the main objectives of the SIP Olive project is to develop an integrated hardware and software platform to monitor the different diseases and pests uh, while monitoring the irrigation water and the salinity of the irrigation water in order to recommend the best practices for uh, cultivating such an important uh, crop in both countries. More specifically, our aim is to early detect the diseases via monitoring the weather conditions and also to detect and count the number of olive fruit fly, which is a major threat to the olive uh, farms, which can uh, cause 100% loss of the, 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 the production and can reduce the quality of the olive oil by 80%. And also we want to manage and monitor the irrigation water and the salinity level in order to come up with uh, the best recommendation for how to use saline water for irrigation. Again, the activities of the project has both hardware components and software components. The hardware components uh, development is led by the Egyptian partners and the software components are, are led by the 
Spanish uh, partners, but this doesn't mean that there is no cooperation. So the hardware is done under the umbrella the coordination with the Spanish team. Likewise, the Spanish team, the development of the software is done in collaboration with the hardware to ensure the ease integration between both the hardware and the software. And I will show you some examples of this integration and this collaboration. So uh, the Egyptian partners has came up with this architecture for the hardware. We have, I mean, central node, which is node one uh, and node two in this uh, slide, which is the node to which the weather, weather sensors are attached, like the temperature, humidity, wind speed and direction, uh, solar radiation. Also, we are uh, having some remote sensor node to which the salinity and the soil attributes are, uh, are attached. And these nodes will be deployed next to individual trees. We have also the pheromone traps, which are equipped with cameras to take pictures of uh, the, the olive fruit fly. And the remote sensor nodes and the pheromone traps are connected to the main nodes through the LoRa technology. Uh, the main node will uh, add its data and send the whole data to the remote server, which is interfaced to the cloud system developed uh, by the Spanish partners. We have already designed the PCBs required for the main node or the gateway, the remote sensor nodes and the smart pheromone traps. And we are in the process of fabricating these designs. And despite the COVID-19 crisis, we managed to import all the required uh, sensors with high quality and very precise uh, requirements governed by the needs of the agriculture teams that we are collaborating or consulting within the project framework. Uh, on the other hand, the Spanish team, or Ceresco, uh, have implemented the architecture for the Cultiva platform in order to store the data and provide a perfect user interface through which the data can be accessed. More specifically, the main features of the Cultiva platform uh, are as follows. First, it has a georeferencing of zones that are the pilot test beds, both in Spain and in Egypt, that uh, we can locate the sensor nodes and uh, we can know uh, all the location of these uh, devices. The Cultiva platform is integrated with both public and private uh, Armo, uh, agro metrological providers. The platform provides uh, a mechanism uh, to, uh, to have a historical information about all the collected information, such as temperature, humidity, accumulated precipitation. Also, the platform, the developed platform, allow the user to record the field actions related to harvesting, pruning, irrigation, fertilization, the application of uh, photosanitary products, the machine, the machinery, the operators, etc. And as you see at the bottom figure, the platform has a dashboard with predefined indicators that allows to uh, allows the user to easily access the different components and the different information of the system. The platform has an artificial intelligence component that is implemented through the following architecture, which is composed of three main layers. The first layer is uh, responsible for uh, storing and recording the data acquired by the soil sensors, the, env the environmental sensors, and the pheromone traps. The second layer is responsible for processing such collected data using artificial intelligence and, ma and machine learning techniques to develop predictive models to forecast the diseases and for optimization of the irrigation mechanism. The topmost layer of the artificial intelligence architecture is the application layer, which provides uh, the web interface through which the users can access the cloud-based platform. An example of the use of uh, artificial intelligence in our platform is the development of the olive fruit fly detection, uh, which is carried by Cairo University. As I said, that the Fermont traps has built-in cameras that take pictures of the, the, the flies that are at, attracted inside or captured inside the traps. And we are using state-of-the-art machine learning and deep learning techniques. More specifically, we have used the you uh, only look once uh, or the YOLO uh, mechanism in order to detect the number of uh, olives. And we have achieved accuracy that can be up to 98%, and we are currently preparing a, a new paper for submission. And we have already published uh, a book chapter in Severe Deep Learning for Sustainable Agriculture that came out of our work in this project. 
So the outcomes of uh, the SIPOLEV uh, project can be summarized as a hardware platform for the monitoring station and pheromone traps to collect all the relevant information from the olive plantation farm. And again, this is the main responsibility of the Egyptian partners. The second outcome is uh, the decision support system that serves as a single point of access to all the relevant information on the olive plantation farm in order to implement better decision making, which is the main responsibility of Suresco and the Spanish partners. The impact of the SIP Olive project is to improve the competitiveness of the farmers and facilitate the adoption of the technology innovations in such an important sector and to contribute to achieve a sustainable agricultural development in both countries. So to conclude the technical part of the SIP Olive, the, this project is a step forward in the Egyptian and Spanish strategy of using technology to improve agricultural practices. Uh, in this project, we are developing an integrated cloud-based IoT system that is used to reduce the olive crop losses due to, uh, to the airborne pests and diseases infection, while monitoring the irrigation water and soil salinity characteristics and how they affect the growth of the crop. And uh, we hope that the outcome of this project will increase the production of the olive in both countries and reduce the environmental pollution by reducing the amount of pesticides used uh, in the cultivation of both uh, in both countries. So next I'll move to some practical tips that we would like to share with the future applicants to such an important funding uh, program. The first tip is that each company or uh, institute need to be to be very very clear in identifying their strategic needs in both R and D and innovation. Based on these uh, strategic needs, they should carefully choose their partners in, in order to uh, complement each other and have um, a real added value to the project. It's very beneficial to have several meetings prior to the submission or in the orche orchestrating of the consortium in order to make sure everything financial wise, technical wise, uh, IP wise is clear and agreed on before starting writing uh, the proposal. Each partner should monitor CTDI and ETDA and monitor their calls and their requirements and feel, they should feel free to contact CTDI or ETDA and they are always replying within a uh, very fast time. Uh, once the consortium is agreed upon, the, the preparation of the, the proposal should start and each, each partner should justify the added value and how this fits within the, the purpose of the call. Each institution should define uh, their own budget, which is consistent with the capacity of the partner and related to the action to be implemented. And all the actions and the budget should be balanced among all the partners of the project. Again, CTDI and ETDA are always supporting the project. And as was explained later, uh, uh, earlier, that they can even help uh, putting uh, partners in touch with each other. One important advice is that, the, is that uh, the consortium should start preparing the proposal as early as possible in order to make sure that all the key aspects that Dr. Safat has indicated are resolved and clarified, such as the specific objectives of the project, the work plan, the proposed innovation, the budget the partner, the schedule of the execution of the different functions within the project, the, the exploitation plans and the consortium agreement. Also, at the national level, uh, there are different specific aspects in each country that should be uh, well uh, addressed during the preparation of the proposal. And the consortium agreement that clarifies the issues related to the intellectual properties and the commercial rights should be also properly defined and clearly stated uh, through the consortium agreement. Another practical advice is uh, to use a technical office, which is a support consultant that facilitate or uh, help the companies in getting in touch and uh, ensure the whole process to be smooth. In the case of Ceresco, uh, they have collaborated with a consulting firm called Artica Plus I, which was really uh, uh, was of a great help, not only for Ceresco, but for all the, the members of the consortium. 
but I can attest that uh, being from Cairo University. Uh, my final uh, practical advice is that it's very, very interesting and beneficial for the success of the project to have uh, the collaborators with different uh, profiles, different backgrounds, different expertise in order to um, complement each other and ensure that all the aspects, all the different aspects of the project are well addressed. And this concludes my talk. Thank you all for listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Khatab. I think Sergio Alvarez from Ceresco, the Spanish company participating in the project, wanted to add some information about the project. So Sergio, if you are there and you can join, please. Well, I would like to ask you something. You've said you would sure. recommend us to start soon enough to prepare the, the proposal. I would like to ask you if you know how long it took you to prepare the proposal. Uh, Hi, Sergio. I think you are probably muted. Sergio? Okay, Dr. Hatab, while Sergio is working on his connection, could you answer the question? Would you know the answer to this question? Sure, How long sure. it took, took you to prepare the proposal? I think somewhere between four and six months. Okay. And you, you launched the partner search and uh, the Spanish side answered? Actually, we contacted it, and I think also the Spanish partner uh, uh, have contacted CTDI, and they put, they put us in touch. Okay. So we received uh, an invitation from uh, um, Suresco, from Ismail and Suarez, and uh, we started to have meetings, and then we formed the, the consortium, and that's how we started. Great. Sergio, can you? Can you hear me? Can you yes, hear me? we can hear you. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. So sorry. No thank you, Cristina, and thank you, Hamed, for the presentation. I just want to say a few words about the collaborations. First of all, uh, thank you all for your participation in the webinar. On the part of Ceresco, we would like to emphasize that uh, it has been a very profitable collaboration. We have established a common objective of great interest for the companies and uh, for the two countries. The knowledge and experiences were complementary for the development of the project. On the Egyptian side, focused on the hardware and um, the Spanish side on the software. We are currently working on the integration of the information collected through the different sensors at the different sites. To and we are very happy with how the work is progressed in accordance with the expectation of all the partners, the competitiveness of farmers. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Sergio. Um, I can see a question now. Is it possible to have a private university in the consortium? Yes, it is possible from the Spanish side it is absolutely possible. It would be subcontracted by the, the Spanish company. But I think this question is more uh, for Dr. Amr Sabwat. Yes, it is possible. For ETIDA, we deal with private universities and with uh, public universities. So the consortium, any university plus private company. Great. I cannot see any more questions now. So I would like to thank Dr. Katab and uh, Ismael Alvarez for joining us. Of course, thank you 
all the attendees, the speakers, and the co-organizers for joining us today and for your participation. We hope it's been a fruitful session for all, and we strongly encourage you to use our one-to-one -one meetings website to start searching your partners. Remember that we have more than 30 research groups from Egypt registered, more than 30 Spanish companies, and more than 50 Egyptian companies. So it's a good chance to try to contact them and schedule your meetings for this afternoon or for tomorrow. Don't miss this opportunity. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye. Thank you, bye. Bye everybody.